Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome to Ikeda. Today we see a new chapter that is called as network functions. And the very first topic is the introduction of network functions. So let us see what exactly it is. So you can see here, I have considered a one port network. Now what is a one port network? So generally a one port network has a pair of terminals where you can attach the input. So a pair of terminals, it is connected to energy source. Now no network can work without energy source. So we know that. So this pair is connected to an energy source. And that energy source is called as driving force for the particular network because it drives that network. And these pair of terminals which are in blue color, terminals means they are some wires or conductors. So these pairs of or these pair of terminals, they are called as driving point of the network. So these pairs are called as driving point and they are connected to some kind of energy source. And this is true for this one port network. There can be two port, three port or n port network. Majorly, we deal with two port networks. Now we consider a two port network. Now, as seen here, a two port network has two pairs of terminals. One is, you can see one one dash, another is two two dash. And so this port one one dash is connected to driving force. Now you consider a two port network. Now two port means it should have four terminals. So this is one, one dash means two and two, two dash means total it is four. That is two pairs of terminals. Now for this two port network, this port one, one dash, now you consider a two port network. Now two port means it should have two pairs of terminals because for one port network, it has one pair of terminals. So you can see there are two pairs of terminals. This can be called as input pair this can be called as output pair so this one one dash this one one dash port is connected to a driving force which drives the circuit and two two dash port is connected to some load or output now generally we call load as output in general we call this driving force as input now we will see what are the types of network functions first of all why we saw what is one port and two port because they will be required to study. Now, when you see the types of network functions, there are major two types. One is transform impedance. Another is transfer function. These are two types or you can see two cases which are to be studied under network functions. So we will study what is transform impedance or transform admittance. So you can see here transform impedance at a particular port is the ratio of voltage transform to current transform for a network in zero state. Now zero state means it has no initial conditions. So transform impedance means there has to be some impedance which is head office. All is in S domain because it is transformed. It is not in time domain. It is in S domain as we are used to do it in Laplace. So Z of S is called as V of S upon I of S because impedance is voltage upon current. So in S domain also, it is voltage transformed divided by current transform. That's why it is written as ratio of voltage transform to current transform. For example, if you refer to this particular two port network and if you want to get the input impedance which is transformed impedance at port number one you will need transformed voltage at this port number one as well as transformed current both in s domain for this port number one and we can call this as z11 you can also calculate z22 which will be v2 upon i2 all in s domain so as we know what is transform impedance which is ratio of voltage upon current we similarly have transform impedance or admittance which is current upon voltage exactly opposite of impedance. So it is current divided by voltage. So it is going to be one upon Z which is reciprocal of this. Now there is one important condition that voltage transform or current transform. We can see that this voltage transform or current transform that define this transform impedance or admittance we can see here 
This impedance is defined by voltage and current. Admittance again defined by current and voltage. But the condition is that both that voltage and current they must relate to same port. Means for example in this two port network if you want to get transform impedance at port 1 which we can call as Z11. So that will be related with voltage and current of same port. You cannot take voltage of one port. We can write here right? as port number 1. So I will write this as port 1 and here as port 2. So we will relate voltage and currents of same port to get transform impedance for particular port. So I will write here that suppose we want to get Z11. That means transform impedance related to port 1. Then from this formula, I will require it V1 of S divided by I1 of S. As simple as that. Suppose I want Z22. That means transform impedance for port number 2 then only change will be v2 of s divided by i2 of s and so on these things will be clear because it will be coming much regularly so the important condition is the voltage transform means v of s or current transform means i of s which define your transform impedance or admittance they must relate to same port that means either it should be port 1 or port 2 Obviously, if we are dealing with two port network, then this comes. This also comes true for one port network also. So impedance or admittance at a given port is called as driving point impedance because at that particular port, we calculate that impedance or admittance and we have seen this definition in the very first part that pair of terminals which are connected to energy source. That means this pair, here also there will be some energy source. And that is nothing but driving force. And so the impedance or admittance at particular port is called as driving point impedance or admittance. Obviously, we will see what is transform impedance. If there is resistance, if there is inductor or there is capacitor, that we will see in some other video. This is just an introduction part. So now we will move to transfer function. And once we complete that, we will see both in details. So now let us see what is transfer function for network having two or more ports only. So this is applicable for a network which is having two or more ports. That means it is not applicable for one port network. Now what is transfer function? It relates the transform of a quantity. It can be voltage or it can be current. So transform of a quantity at one particular port to the transform of another quantity at another port. So here you have one port and here you have another port. So means maybe voltage at this port will be related with current at this port. It is also possible or voltage at port number two will be connected to voltage at port number one. So assuming that we are applying this all to a two port network. Output quantities, let us say that output quantities are V2 of S and I2 of S which I have written here for a two port network. This is V2 and I2. And let us assume that the input quantities are V1 of S and I1 of S, which are here, V1 and I1, all in S domain. So if this is your two port network, for this two port network, you have four types of transfer functions, which can be tabulated in this one table. Now see here there is a term which is called as numerator, here there is denominator. That means if I want to write equation for G12, now what is G12? G12 is voltage transfer function. So let's write the first one. So what is this G12? G12 will be called as numerator divided by this denominator so in numerator we have v2 of s so i will write here v2 of s divided by v1 of s that's it that is our voltage transfer function in general this gives us voltage gain in a network mainly in bjt's and fet's when we deal with all electronic circuits we use v2 by v1 as voltage transfer function which gives us gain now similarly, I can write all the quantities, for example, Y12, 
will be i2 upon v1 then z12 will be v2 upon i1 because it is numerator divided by denominator so voltage upon current and there is alpha 12 alpha 12 for this it will be numerator is current i2 and denominator is current i1 so i2 divided by i1 will be alpha 12 so we will write all the functions So you can see admittance transfer function as we know admittance is current upon voltage so because it is y12 see this 2 will be in numerator so i2 upon v1 this is a way to remember it similarly we will write the third one You can see impedance is nothing but ratio of voltage upon current so z12 means v2 because this 2 is later so v2 divided by i1 will be called as impedance transfer function and the last one current transfer function will be output current upon input current or current at port 2 divided by current at port 1 so it is going to be i2 of s divided by i1 of s all these quantities will be in s form or s domain so y z and alpha all will be in s form so this was all about the introduction part now you will wonder that y12 is possible then whether y21 is possible yes it is also possible so for example if you want to for some other network you want to write y21 is equal to it will be i1 of s divided by v2 of s so on so only thing that we need to know is this later part this 2 is the previous one and 1 is the later part or later digit that will be in numerator and this will be in denominator so in same way you can write all the functions so that's all about this introduction part and more detailed videos will be coming for this chapter so stay tuned to ikeda so thank you very much guys for watching this video please subscribe to ikeda thank you